I think some people would have married for love in Tudor England, but people probably would have been motivated by a number of other factors as well. Um, Social advancement would have been a key one. Obviously, for women, they would seek advancement by marrying um, usually an older man. However, one of the things that you see a lot about, a lot of contemporary comment is about young men marrying older wealthy widows as a means of social advancement. Also, for some people, a second or a third marriage would have been an economic necessity, um, especially if you had children, young children from a, a first or second marriage. You would need to have a partner to help you support them. And for women in particular, remarriage was, for many of them, an economic consideration. It's very easy to assume, because marriage was int- intrinsically linked with politics, that there was no room for love, that somehow everything was arranged and everything was was, was barren of, of love. Um, I think this is to make the mistake of, of defining love in the 21st century terms, of somehow of a romantic passion that, that lives outside all of the other considerations that, that people bring to deciding whether they've met the right matrimonial candidate. Um, marriage was about love. I don't think marriages would have been considered if there was a clear um, lack of attraction between the two partners in the same way as a marriage wouldn't have been considered in the 16th century if there was a clear social distinction between the partners that wouldn't have worked if the marriage was considered to be important. There's some exceptions to that but generally speaking love was considered to be part of courtship which was considered to be part of a negotiation um, an alliance between perhaps two different families that would set them both up for the next generation. Courtly love was also about the adoration of a woman a woman being an ideal, a woman being trained as a courtier. In all of the intellectual and uh, female refinements that one would expect of a royal lady at court. So it is, if you like, a mentality, I suppose, of manners. That's the best way to explain it. And Henry loved courtly love. He loved the... Um, ceremonial of it, he loved the flirtation of it, he loved the um, chase, I suppose, (laughs) and the romance. Uh, We forget, you know, Henry was a very romantic man. He was actually quite a romantic man. But I've said that because the reality also was that he also enjoyed sex. In fact, when the astrologers um, uh, made his original birth chart in uh, based on the heavens at the time of his birth, they noticed that, in fact, he was going to be a young man who took a great deal of interest in love and sex and in uh, the family. And, of course, it was a very good prediction. He did. And so he was also very interested in the reality of courtly love. Trying to understand the motivation for Henry's wives, understanding why they married Henry VIII, um, It's complicated. I think it depends on which wife we're talking about. When Henry was young, he was described as being good-looking, athletic, um, and he was a young prince. And Catherine of Aragon, I don't think, would have found it particularly difficult um, to be attracted in that way. And there's a lot of evidence to suggest that, as a young couple, they were happy. And then he marries Anne Boleyn absolutely for lust. Anne Boleyn's ability as a seductress is unique in English history. For six years, she keeps the King of England, the most powerful man possibly in Europe, dancing like a cat on a hot tin roof, and he doesn't get beyond first base. It's the most extraordinary bit of female manipulation, probably in the history of England. It's phenomenal. I think later on, as Henry becomes fatter and less good-looking and and, and less healthy, it's more difficult for us to understand the personal motivation but 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 love and attraction was all bound up with with family alliances and and wealth and access to power and influence henry's wives would have gained different things from marriage to the king firstly status Um, for catherine of aragon and anne boleyn they were both crowned queen consort of england and as such that would have placed them above all other women in the country They would have been given lands and property and money to manage their own household. And as such, they'd have been one of the leading landowners in England. 
And finally, for women who were interested in the political environment at court, especially someone like Anne Boleyn, they would have the opportunity to be right at the centre of the political life of the country. But he's, he's not alone in making these multiple marriages. That's another important point to make. Both of Henry's sisters, Margaret and Mary, are multiply married too. Mary Tudor, Henry's sister, is particularly interesting. She's married off first by Henry VII, Mary and Henry VIII's father, to the aged French king, Louis XII. Um, he's dead very quickly after that. And she then famously chooses her next husband really for herself. It's a Tudor thing, this. You know, she's very much like her brother Henry, to marry Charles Brandon, who is a member of the court. But it's a hugely um, controversial thing for her to do because she is one of the only few, um, if you like, political uh, cards that Henry VIII has to offer the great games of foreign policy and diplomacy. If she takes herself out of the marriaging stakes, then Henry VIII doesn't have her to offer up at the next round of negotiations around you know, the, the top table of European diplomacy.